An average of just under 160,000 people die each day worldwide. It's no wonder that there are some truly strange and even downright unbelievable ways that people perish. In this series, I will be presenting you with some of the strangest ways that you can die. As always, I'll be giving you an explanation of what can happen to your body as well as how it might feel. I would love to hear which one you think is the strangest. My content may be upsetting to some, viewer discretion advised. You might think that these forbidden gushers are no worse than swallowing ordinary soap, but they contain a not-so-secret ingredient that has been known to bring on a brutal, bloody end. Oddly enough, the pliable casing is probably the safest part of the pod, though it likely tastes as if you melted plastic on your hot dog and dunked it in gasoline. The explosive innards, however, contains ingredients that are caustic in addition to toxic. One of these ingredients is 1,4-dioxane, which comes from the ether family. It's a known carcinogen, but that's a tomorrow problem, and consuming enough of it packs some immediate punches. The first of which will be a throat punch. Between this, the ethanol, and hydrogen peroxide, it will cause some serious irritation to your tissue as you gulp it down your gullet. There's a very real chance that you will gag on the putrid taste and aspirate it into your delicate lungs and airways. That will bring on chemical burns that will only grow in misery as time passes. The damage can eventually go deep enough to result in internal bleeding. Other symptoms that can sprout up include vertigo, dizziness, a vice-like headache, pounding gut and side pain, and of course, vomiting. If you thought swallowing this candied molten lava was bad, just imagine how much worse throwing it up will be, especially because your stomach acids will only add to its ability to sear your already burnt tissue. The ingredients inside of these hell pods can bring on death by damaging your liver and kidneys, and organ failure truly is an agonizing battle. It's also possible that your internal injuries can result in enough bleeding to cause death. Somewhere among the dark corners of the web, the term corpse water was coined. Sadly, Elisa wasn't the first and likely not the last body to be found in a water tank. The only good news is that aside from emotional trauma, nobody was mortally damaged at the Cecil Hotel from drinking the foul water, but it can have serious consequences. The most obvious detriment of consuming corpse-contaminated water is that when a person dies, their body passes waste of both the fecal and urine variety. That means that any viruses, bacteria, or parasites present in that waste could potentially infect you after drinking, and that's a whole can of worms in itself. The worst part is that you will likely never know where your new miserable ailment came from, making it tricky to get a swift diagnosis. As the human body decays, the truth is that it becomes a petri dish for bacteria and fungi. As the process progresses, these species have the ability to create ethanol. This is exactly why a badly decomposed body may test positive despite sobriety at death. Even if the conditions aren't quite right for that to happen, the yeast and bacteria can still mess with your internal ecosystem. Considering that the bacteria is responsible for one of the worst smells on the planet, you can imagine that it's dangerous to consume. Can you die from such a thing? Absolutely. It's most likely that your immune system will be able to save you, but there's still a chance of getting a deadly parasite, or in rare, rare cases, you could contract something like tuberculosis if the person who died was infected. Just imagine that you've been stuffed and locked in a preheating electrical oven. It's claustrophobic, stinks of eroding metal and burnt grease, and the only illumination comes from a tiny taunting window. For now. Because you are sandwiched between two nickel heating elements that are slowly beginning to glow. Ready for the worst news? Even though this ninth circle of hell casket is only set to reach 400 degrees, those elements will cap out at over 1100. That low-pitched humming that you hear is a fan circulating that blistering heat around so that food, or in this case you, cooks evenly. In the first two minutes, your confusion transforms to denial and then panic as your lungs grow heavy and your palms and pits sweat. Your eyes water to compensate for the blowing desert-like heat and your throat yearns for a drink of cool, crisp water. By minute four, your blood vessels have dilated to increase blood flow to your flesh in hopes of pushing out heat, but this will not help. It's 170 degrees now and all fluid near your surface is rapidly evaporating. That searing nickel is just inches away from the skin of your neck and scalp and it's beginning to split, spit, and ooze as your nerves throw a monumental tantrum. You smell burning hair because it's actually beginning to melt. By minute five, your sense of clarity is severely distorted, which does nothing to dull your systemic pain. Your muscles have seized up into one jumbo charley horse and your flesh has full thickness burns in some areas and second degree in others. It's those second degree burns that makes you let out the loudest animalistic shrieks. Your nerves remain intact, which gives way to sensations that rivals a rusty molten ax severing the same spot over and over. Meanwhile, the third degree wounds have given birth to a deep pulsating pressure and your heart is beating erratically against your chest as if trying to escape. By minute seven, you are staring death in the face. The oven has reached 300 and you are at 108. You're experiencing frequent convulsions, your tongue and throat feels like a dried crispy sponge about to combust, and the tiny glands in your eyelids are beginning to melt. 
You will definitely be dead by minute eight. I'm sure you've been upside down once or twice. You could feel the blood rushing to and pooling in your head. Your eyes began to pulsate as if about to pop, and maybe you were hit with a small ping of panic. You weren't in any real danger as long as it was just a visit, but if you stuck around, those icky sensations would turn into red flags. Our bodies are tailor-made to be heads up. Our circulatory system works because it is a one-way street. This keeps blood from pooling at our feet. When upside down, blood technically travels its usual course. Only once it reaches our head, it simply stays there. This puts immediate strain on our heart as it tries to compensate. In addition to that, our lungs normally rest gently on our diaphragm and abdominal organs. When topsy-turvy, these organs are now compressing on the lungs and they can no longer fully expand and contract. When in this position for hours, the pounding pressure in your noggin will grow and grow. It might feel as if a metal claw is clamping down on it. Your eyeballs will quiver as if filling with hot steam and with time, your sight may disappear completely. Meanwhile, it's like an elephant is standing on your chest as stomach acid gurgles up your throat like a clogged drain. Your esophagus is raw and burns as if swallowing hot embers and you just can't get a good deep clarifying breath. First surface capillaries will pop, which will go unnoticed. As the blood builds and builds in your head, a larger blood vessel may blow. Now you have a major internal bleed that can result in brain damage, and blood really inflames any nearby tissue. Death will arrive in the form of positional asphyxiation or cardiac arrest, and it can happen in just a few hours if a person has high blood pressure or a heart condition. A healthy individual can last for anywhere between 10 and 28 hours. Did you know that nutmeg can kill you? What if I told you that majority of cases involving poisoning aren't exactly accidental? During the pandemic, we all got a little stir crazy and maybe even considered doing some strange things for entertainment. One person decided to make a drink with an entire bottle of nutmeg, chug it, and film it. One expensive trip to the ER and several hallucinations of Smurfs turning to pickles later and they knew that they really messed up. In all honesty, they were lucky enough to survive to tell the tale. Nutmeg is known to have mind-altering effects, but those effects come along with some big problems. First of all, the amount needed to cause that effects is also often enough to become catastrophic. Anybody who has tried and survived would likely tell you that it was the worst time of their life. In addition to hallucinations and really bad trips, it also comes along with severe nausea, violent vomiting, trembling, inability to regulate temperature, overwhelming headaches, and heart palpitations. It doesn't stop there. As if wild hallucinations aren't enough to induce anxiety, the effects have also been known to cause an impending sense of doom. Things can escalate quickly from feeling flushed, thirsty, and not making sense to needing resuscitation efforts fast. You could go from profusely sweating to uncontrollable convulsions or could even fall into a comatose state. Even if that doesn't happen, the harmful sensations could push you over the edge. You could experience intense agitation and extreme restlessness. Couple that with not being rooted in reality and anything could happen. Some experts believe that even two teaspoons is enough to potentially kill. Of course, it has to be consumed in a very short period, so baked goods are more than safe. In 2021, a lobster fisherman allegedly had a very short stint inside of a humpback whale. He estimated that the excursion lasted around 30 to 40 seconds before it spit him back out at the water's surface. If this story is true, then the man only spent time in the whale's mouth because their esophagus is too narrow to usher down someone of his size. Now, a sperm whale, that's a different story. This is the only species with an esophagus capable of getting us down and they have four stomachs, so it's going to be a long ride. Unlike a humpback, sperm whales have teeth. They are kind of shaped like a banana and can grow up to 8 inches long. If you miraculously make it past these without being masticated, well, it's really no victory. You'll be crushed and strangulated down its gullet with the help of constricting muscles. Once in the first stomach chamber, you'd be snuffed and smushed further with a thick muscular lining. In the second, you'd be coated by a slightly caustic thick waxy fluid that would suffocate you if that wasn't already actively happening. I forgot to mention that in addition to the pitch black darkness, there is no oxygen for you to breathe. Also, hydrochloric acid has been invited to the party. The acid is secreted and is a must to break down the whale's supper, which is you. It has already been eroding your outer tissue raw. That acid is already eaten into your eye tissue, causing a thick, mucousy fluid to ooze out. To sum it all up, there would be panic, suffocation, crushing, and acid eating away at you all while in the pitch dark. You'd be dead in four to five minutes, long before you pass through, at which point you'd be a hunk of mushy, acid-bleached bones. So no, no fisherman has ever been swallowed and lived to tell the tale. Luckily, sperm whales tend to avoid us humans entirely. 
The actual cause of death might shock you. I know what you're thinking. You just kick the door open. Well, you better do that before it's turned on because soon you'll be disoriented as you're tossed around like a ping pong ball in a tournament with children on a sugar high. It will only take seconds before you lose grasp of left and right and up and down, plus some dryers have locks. We can rule out a quick suffocation because dryers aren't airtight. Carbon dioxide poisoning is more likely because your breath won't escape quick enough and it will build up around you. But no, that is not the likely thing that will take you out. First, let's address the immediate threat. There are no soft surfaces in a dryer, and have you ever heard the Armageddon like thumps of shoes on a cycle? You are going to endure blunt force trauma everywhere over and over. Your instincts will drive you to shield your head with your hands, which will mash your fingers into the rapidly rotating drum, likely dislocating and fracturing several. This will happen very early on. These injuries can cause both an electrical-like pulsating and intense spasming of surrounding muscle. Additionally, your legs will likely break and your face and head will smash into the heating parts, sending a minor tornado of blood whirling around with you. Now for the part that will turn this into one of the worst forms of torture. Dryers can get as hot as 135 degrees Fahrenheit. If you think of how the zipper on your jeans can sear your flesh when fresh out of the dryer, then you'll get it. That may not sound so hot, but you're surrounded by metals that conduct heat like a champ. So now, every time that you reassault previous wounds by smashing into the drum, it nearly brands your extra vulnerable wounds and nerves. Death will arrive one of two likeliest ways, brain trauma due to the repeat plum force trauma to the head or a combo platter of hyperthermia, meaning overheating, plus hypoxia, lack of oxygen to the brain. I say that it would be a combination because heat stroke already reduces blood flow to the brain and when the little blood reaching it carries less oxygen, your goose is cooked. The amount of time that this can take can vary from 8 to 14 minutes depending on how quickly the device takes to reach maximum heat. Luckily, this is a rare error. What happens is the immune system wages war on the foreign cells inside of the body. This can eventually result in their destruction, but there can be some seriously bad news symptoms in the process. Sometimes this condition can reach a fever pitch while the transfusion is happening and for others it can take hours. At onset, your infusion site might feel hot to the touch. As minutes tick by, it will start to burn as if it's infected. You'll start to get real itchy all over, but unfortunately, these can all be side effects of common medications given. What's even worse is that you might be stricken with an unexplainable feeling. You will sense imminent danger ahead and it will be all-consuming. This can be made worse if respiratory distress is present. Panic naturally comes along with air hunger, difficulty breathing, and chest pain. Mix that with impending doom and it's a terror that is really hard to top. Your temperature can climb, bringing on full-body shuddering chills. Your head will seem to fill with hot helium as it aches and swims in vertigo and dizziness. Fever is the most commonly reported symptom. Many others report pulsating back and flank pain that only intensifies. It's been compared to the pain of a severe kidney infection. The fatality rate is up to 44% and happens from acute kidney failure or from the blood coagulating and clumping. It can both restrict blood flow and cause excessive bleeding in other areas of the body. 